So one year ago, we interviewed uh, Jade, Jade Raymond on the new big project, which is uh, Ubisoft Toronto. And you told us that the main focus was hiring the best, from some of the best from the industry to get a uh, focus on AAA games. Is that the same right now? Welcome. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, we've had great success, I think, so far. We've built up the studio to 350 people. And of course, I think it's some of the most talented people in the game industry. Uh, we shipped our first big AAA game, so we shipped Splinter Cell Blacklist. And now we're working on five projects simultaneously. So we're continuing the growth and the evolution of the studio. From those five projects, uh, um, some of them are Yes, your own projects and maybe some of them are part of a multi-team project uh, at Ubisoft? Yeah, that's right. So we're collaborating with Montreal on the next Assassin's Creed. So that's exciting for me since obviously I have a, that's close to my heart, the uh, franchise. We're also working on the next Far Cry, which is really exciting because Far Cry 3 was one of my favorite games and uh, everyone's really excited to be working on that. And then we have three unannounced projects uh, that we're, we're leading two of them out of Toronto. Okay, and on Far Cry 4 and, and Assassin's Creed 5, maybe one, one of the biggest new features is the co-op uh, many players game uh, in, uh, was announced at E3. So uh, is that like a dream come true for you uh, regarding Assassin's Creed? And obviously, how is that adapting to, to, to Far Cry universe? Well, I mean, I'm really excited that finally you'll be able to play an Assassin's Creed game with friends. I think that's something that will just add a lot to the experience of being able to be an assassin but in a group with friends and live through, you know, especially the exciting uh, setting of the French Revolution where a lot of stuff is going on. So I think that's great. Um, in terms of Far Cry, we haven't yet said which parts we're working on in Toronto, so I can't give too many details about that. Yeah. <laughs> So um, you mentioned the Splinter Cell, of, of course, uh, you uh, delivered last year and you told us that after launch you always uh, take some surveys on the uh, players and get some feedback. So what was the feedback uh, in general about that game? Um, we got a lot of feedback ranging kind of across the board. I think um, it was a game that did appeal to a lot of the core fans, I think. Um, I think some of the core fans were worried that maybe we were going to make the game uh, dumb it down and make it you know, easier, but that's definitely not the case. If you play on uh, the realistic, you're going to have a challenge. And so a lot of the fans were really happy to find kind of more of the chaos theory experience back in Blacklist. Maybe uh, some, some fans are, are maybe concerned about uh, uh, Sam becoming kind of a Batman with many gadgets and not going on his own, like, you know, with not that many uh, weapons and things to use. And do you think it's uh, important to, to reduce that technological level so, so fans can get like the classic experience again? Well, I don't know. Actually, Splinter Cell has always been about tech, right? I mean, it's one of the differentiating features is that you always had all of that tech equipment and especially added to, you know, the spies versus mercs experience and all of the, you know, gadgets that you would have as a spy versus the mercs. Uh, so I really think it is fundamental to the brand. Okay. And regarding uh, Ubisoft Toronto, uh, obviously it was uh, recently open and, and, and now you're, uh, you said 350 employees, but you want to get like 800 in 10 years. In, in which point uh, you, are you currently and how are you feeling the whole process? Because you were pretty excited about it and, and now some time has passed. So. Um, well, I mean, so we're at 350, so we're almost halfway to our objective of 800. Of course, I mean, the studio might grow beyond that. Um, I think, you know, the big focus for us now is keeping that culture of feeling like it's a small studio even though we're continuing to grow and, you know, now we're working on multiple projects and so it's a whole different phase now. You know, everyone was working on one team uh, before and now people are working on five different projects and it's really important to me that we have that culture of feeling like we're one team and so we're putting a lot of effort as a studio on that. How can you manage all that? There's a lot of good people that I work with. <laughs> I don't do it all myself. <laughs> okay. And then there's 
Ambient Gaming and the Fourth Dimension. Yeah. What's that about? <laughs> well, so that's what I gave a whole half hour talk about, so I don't think I can answer your question so quickly. Um, but, you know, no, I'm to sorry, <laughs> we, we couldn't attend, but, but that, that sounds okay. like super cryptic or something. Well, I'm really excited about video games and always have been because it's a medium that's constantly evolving. You know, what a video game is, how you interact with them, doesn't only change every time there's a new console cycle, but the possibilities of what a game is changes each time there's a new platform and new advances. And, you know, games are very old. People have been playing cards and dice and board games forever. Uh, and then there were the arcade games. And, you know, now we're on the verge, I think, of big breakthroughs in tech that are going to transform games or bring new types of games to life. And so that's what I was talking about a bit. I, I think the proliferation of cheap sensors in the form of wearable and the Internet of Things is going to create a new kind of ambient gaming, which I'm, I'm calling sort of seamless gaming that can happen in the background and in the real world. Um, and then the fourth dimension is reference to uh, virtual reality, not only the display technology, but all of the new input technology that's going with it and how that's going to transform um, how we interact with those types of games. Do you have any personal idea you would like to try with these kinds of technologies and, and innovations? Yeah, I talked about a few of them uh, during the talk. So in terms of um, making the real world playable, I think there are tons of things that are exciting, but I think that we're on the verge of having an MMO that you actually can play out in the real world with real objects. Um, and then in terms of VR, I would love to have a zero G kind of parkour game where you're actually in a space suit navigating around and having the experience just like you know, Chris Hatfield gets to have, or only a select few astronauts of really looking down, you know, at the Earth from above and trying to do something in space with the pressure of you know zero g and managing your oxygen and things like that. So <laughs> I would love to have that. That kind sounds of like one of the, your five uh, projects. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> no, these are just ideas. I can't share anything about the project. So no. <laughs> so aside from that uh, exciting uh, friends and multiplayer uh, Assassin's Creed uh, we're getting this year, what are you really looking forward to uh, as a gamer? As a gamer, I'm really looking forward to Evolve. I think it looks amazing. It's exactly my kind of game, and I love, you know, it's a very simple concept of, uh, you know, people in co-op with the traditional roles, uh, but playing against one player so that one player gets to sort of have a single player experience. When they play the monster? Yeah, when they play the monster. I, I will play the monster, for sure. <laughs> Although I hear it's maybe hard to win as the monster. At the beginning? Yeah, at the beginning. You have to evolve and eat them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm super excited for that game. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck with those many projects, that many people. Yes, thank you. <laughs>